introduction man took help of expressions symbols drawings and sounds to communicate his thoughts ideas feelings and emotions to others this led to invention of dialects and scripts this script contributed to the development of language over a period of time language was being used for expression of thoughts the constructive use of language led to creation of literature from ancient time indian literature is known for its diversity and uniqueness indian scholars divided ancient literature into vedic and classical literature besides this some folk literature was also popular language and literature if we quickly look at the history we can see an emergence of variety of languages since centuries these languages influenced one another and it resulted in development of literature as a result some new languages and literature have developed and flourished the best example of this is sanskrit language sanskrit language is less in use in present time but religious ceremonies and worshiping rituals are dealt in sanskrit language generally language provides opportunity for the humans for better expression and understanding india's most ancient script is that of harappan civilization which has not been deciphered and so we have not obtained much information about their languages maharishi panini was a great sanskrit grammarian the most important book of this time is maharishi panini's ashtadhyayi which is a noteworthy book of sanskrit grammar of 4th century sanskrit is considered the language of aryans language of sages or language of scholars it has been accepted by all at the international level that sanskrit is the best language for the computer use sanskrit was the chief language for knowledge science religion and philosophy ancient indian literature vedas veda means knowledge they are four rigveda samaved yajurved atharvaved rigveda the most ancient book of indian literature is the rigveda it consists of 1028 verses it is a wonderful work divided into 10 divisions most of the verses are prayers of god they were used during the yagnas among the verses those worshiping usha or the goddess of dawn are fascinating this work describes political social and religious matters of aryans who were residing in the region of saptasindhu Samaveda three other vedas were also composed after rigveda out of them samaveda was composed to focus on the process of recitation of verses hence it is known as the gangotri of music yajurved it is called a veda of yagnas it is composed in both the forms prose and verse this describes the hymns recited at time of yagyas the religious practices and rituals atharvaveda atharvaveda describes various types of rituals and sanskaras upanishad the upanishadic literature gives us a vivid description and analysis of the beginning of the universe the mysteries of life and death materialistic and spiritual world etc bruhadaranya and chandogya are the earliest of upanishad in the dialogue form they are 108 in all as mentioned in muktiko upanishad brahmanical literature many brahmanical epics were composed to understand the meaning of vedic literature any critical appreciation based on vedas composed in the poetic form are included in brahmanical literature vedic literature and directive principles regarding behavior have been explained broadly aranyakas 
Aryans used to spend their last phase of life in Aranyakas, making their ashrams in Aranyakas or forest. They composed literature based on philosophy, which was the result of their deep thinking. It is known as Aranyakas. Vedangas The Vedangas literature deals with the religious practices and rituals, grammar, astrology and astronomy. The Ramayana and the Mahabharata are two great Indian epics. The present form of these epics can be traced back to the second century. The Ramayana has the story of Ramchandra, the king of Ayodhya. The Ramayana is the smaller epic than the Mahabharata. It narrates many attractive stories of adventure. The Mahabharata is the world's largest epic, has one lakh verses. This describes the war between Kauravas and Pandavas. Besides, it also consists of numerous stories. The Bhagavad Gita, a part of Mahabharata, expounds the deep philosophical principles. It conveys the message of achieving moksha or salvation through jnana, karma and bhakti. Both the epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, have been influencing millions of Indians and the literature for a long time. They have implanted motivational seeds of sanskars in the Indians. During this period of Sanskrit literature was produced, which contained a good combination of religious and worldly aspects of life. The Puranas played an important role in explaining initial Vedic religion of earlier time. During this period, many scriptures and Smriti Granthas were composed. These scriptures dealt with science and philosophy. For example, Kautilya's Arthashastra is a book of management as well as books on various topics such as arts, mathematics and other sciences. The Smriti Granth explains the religious teachings, laws and customs. The earlier Buddhist literature was written in Pali. As it is divided into three sections, it is known as Tripitika, it consists of Sukta Pitika, Vinaya Pitika and Abhidhamma Pitika. Besides, many other works were also composed in Buddhist literature. Gupta period was known as the golden period for the growth and development of Sanskrit poems and dramas. The great writers like Kalidas, Bhavbhuti, Bharvi, Bharati Hari, Banabhat, Mag, and many others belonged to this period. Of these, Kalidas is known all over the world. His works, Kumar Sambhava, Raghuvansham, Meghdut, Abhigyan Shakuntalam, and Rutu Samhar are renowned for their best poetic and dramatic style. Bana wrote the Kadambari and Harsha Charit, a biography of King Harsha. Other works of the period are Bhavbhuti's Uttar Ramcharit, Bharavi's Kiratarjunyam, Vishakhadatta's Mudra Rakshas, Shudraks Mrichakatikam, and Dandi's Dasakumara Charita. The subjects of these work were political events, romance, allegories, comedies, and philosophy. In ancient times, verses were composed in earlier form of Gujarati language. In the course of time, Gujarati language developed and many literary works were composed in it. The heritage of Gujarati literature was made prosperous by literary contribution of Narsin Mehta, Mirabai, Dayaram, Akho, Premchand, Pritam, and others who composed beautiful verses, songs, garba, narrative poems, and chappas, etc. After that, the scholars like Narmad, Navalram, Kishorlal Mashruwala, Pannalal Patel, Umashankar Joshi, Mahipatram Ruparam Nilkant, Govardhan Ram Tripathi, and others enriched Gujarati literature with their works. 
the four dravidian languages tamil telugu kannada and malayalam developed their own scripts and literature tamil is the oldest of these with its literature belonging to early centuries of the christian era according to tradition three literary gatherings and sangams were held at which many sages and poets recited their compositions they contained many themes like politics war and love the famous works of this body of literature includes eto thokai composition of eight poems tol kapiyam or grammar and the patthupato the 10 songs tiruvalluvar wrote the famous urul which in verse deals with many aspects of life and religion medieval literature during the beginning of medieval age in north india the language of literature was sanskrit so the great works were composed during this period were in sanskrit in this age two great works were written in kashmir first was somadeva's katha sarit sagar and second was kalhana's raj tarangini these are the first historical books of india another famous work of this time is the geet govind by jayadeva which is one of the finest poems in sanskrit literature as we have said before this was the period when the apabharams languages had started developing into modern indian languages one of the earliest works in an early form of hindi was prithviraj raso by chandabadrai the work that marks the beginning of hindi literature deals with heroic deeds of prithviraj chauhan in this time sanskrit literature made great stride in south india for some time jainism influenced kannada literature the poet pampa composed adi puran and vikram arjun vijayant the poet ponna wrote shanti puran describing the life of 16th jain tirthankar the poet rana composed two books namely ajit nath puran and gadha yuddha the poets namely pampa ponna and rana are known as the trio of early kannada literature poet kamban composed ramayana in tamil language apart from this other famous literary works were written in tamil language the development of indian languages and composition got a promotion in delhi sultanate two forms of delhi language khadi boli and brij bhasha began to be used for writing literature many devotional songs were composed in these languages many heroic poems and stories were composed in rajasthani language which is similar to hindi and gujarati the heroic works like alha udal and visal dev raso were popular at that time a book called chandrayan written by mulla daud is the oldest book in avadhi language however the critical appreciation of the ancient books was still written in sanskrit language persian was the language of court of delhi sultanate consequently many persian words are seen in indian languages many historians emerged out during this period we got proper description of indian history through turkish writer in persian language ziauddin barani wrote the tarikh e feroz shahi which gives a detailed account of the region of the khilji and tughlaq kings he also wrote a book on political theory called fatwa e jahangiri the most outstanding literary figure of this period was amir khusro he was a poet historian mystic saint and composer of music he was also a disciple of nizamuddin aulia he wrote the ashika the noor sifihar the kiratul sadayan the khazain ul fatah and several other works of poetry he took great pride of his being an indian and praised india as the earthly paradise he praised india's flora fauna its beauty its buildings its knowledge and learning he strongly believed that in many respects the essence of hinduism resembled islam he considered hindoli 
the Hindi spoken around the region of Delhi, his mother tongue, and composed many verses in it. He composed verses in many languages. He wrote a number of bilingual quatrains and verses in Hindi and Persian. The healthy tradition started by him continued for centuries after him. The regional kings gave a great impetus to regional languages and literature. Bhakti saints preached in the languages of the people. Many of them, like Kabir, were great poets. Bhojpuri and Avadhi were the major dialects during those days. The works of Kabir are chiefly composed in Sadhukhadi. Among them, Kabir's Dohas have become a part of folklore. Malik Muhammad Jaisi wrote Padmavat in Avadhi. There are many other poets of Avadhi in this period. Moreover, the well-known Ramcharit Manas by Tulsidas was written in Avadhi. There were many other writers of Avadhi language. Besides Hindi language, literature in other languages also developed. In Bengali, the Ramayana by Krita Vasa and the hundreds of lyrics by the famous poet Chandi Das were written under the patronage of the rulers. With Saint Chaitanya's, the tradition of writing devotional songs began. Narsin Mehta wrote devotional songs in Gujarati and Namdev and Saint Eknath in Marathi. There were important developments in Kashmir under Zainul Abidin, under whose patronage many Sanskrit works like the Mahabharata and the Raja Tarangini were translated into Persian. In the reign of kings of Vijayanagar, Sanskrit literature continued to develop. However, this was an important period for the growth of Telugu literature. Raja Krishnadevarai, the great king of Vijayanagar, was also a Telugu and Sanskrit writer. He wrote the Amukta Malayad. As in art and architecture, the Mughal period also saw a great development in literature. Babur, the first Mughal ruler, was one of the pioneers of Turkish poetry and also the author of a very valuable autobiography, Tuzuk e Babur, in Turkish, which was later translated into Persian, entitled as Babar Nama. Gulbadan Begum, sister of Emperor Humayun, wrote Humayun Nama. Jahangir wrote his great autobiography, the Tuzuk e Jahangiri. Aurangzeb also was a prolific writer and the last Mughal emperor, Bahadur Shah Zafar, was a notable Urdu poet. Hindi literature made significant progress during Akbar's reign. Tulsidas and Surdas wrote in this period. The great poet Keshavdas wrote on love and separation. Rahim's Dohas are still popular all over India. Many noteworthy books were written during this period. Abdul Fazl wrote the Aine Akbari and the Akbar Nama. Aine Akbari gives details of Indian customs, manners, religion, philosophy, economic condition and almost every aspect of life. As a historical work, it is perhaps unparalleled. Abdul Fazl's brother, Faizi, was great Persian poet and he translated many Sanskrit works into Persian. Akbar had established an independent department for translation of Sanskrit works like the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, the Atharva Veda, the Bhagavad Gita and the Panchatantra. One of the most significant developments during the medieval period was the birth of Urdu language. This new language soon developed into one of the richest modern Indian languages. It produced great poets like Vali, Mir Dard, Mir Taki Mir, Nazir Akbarabadi, Abdullah Khan, Ghalib, Iqbal and others. Urdu prose also developed in the early 18th century when the translation of most of the historical works from Sanskrit into Urdu began. At the same time, original prose work in Urdu was written. Muhammad Hussein Azad's Darbar e Akbari is one of the best works of Urdu language. The Ancient Universities of India 
Nalanda. Ancient Nalanda University was situated at Bargaon village of Patna district in Bihar. The Nalanda gave more importance in Buddhist and Jain traditions. This ancient university also became pilgrimage of Jains as Mahavir Swami had performed 14 chaturmas here. In the 5th century, Kumar Gupta had built a monastery here. Since then, fame of Nalanda had increased. There were thousands of priceless treasures of manuscripts. This was a pious place of Indian culture. Students from various parts of the world used to come here for study. The great traveller, Hume Sang, also came here. Today, only the ruins of the great university remain. But amidst the ruins, one can also visualize the glorious culture of India. A student who passed out from Nalanda was considered the ideal student of India. During 5th to 11th century, education was best at Nalanda and in India at that time, the best libraries of the world were available. Many students of India and abroad used to come for study and research in the library of Takshashila as well as in Nalanda University. Huen Sang took 657 books from here to China. Huen Sang visited in the 7th century. There were seven huge halls, rooms or sections in the university. There were 300 rooms for delivering lectures. Special monasteries were built for dwelling of students. Many villages were donated for university sustenance. Food and clothing facilities were provided free of cost from the earnings obtained from those villages. Its book repository or library area was known as Dharmganj. During 5th to 11th century BC, Nalanda was reputed as well as an esteemed center of education. Takshashila Ancient University of Takshashila was located at Rawalpindi of present Pakistan. It was the capital city of ancient Gandhar region. This university imparted education in 64 subjects. Most of the students stayed in the ashram to practice with Guru. Jivak, the disciple of Lord Buddha, learnt the lessons of Ayurveda here. The composer of Arthashastra or economics, Kautilya, studied here. According to a belief, this university was named after the name of Taksha, the son of Bharat, brother of Lord Ram, born in Raghukul. It was a renowned education center of 7th century. Students were free to study the subjects of their interest. In spite of the limit allotted of 20 students per teacher, they used to teach even more. Students from distant cities like Varanasi, Rajgraha, Mithila and Ujjain overcrowded the university. Princess of Varanasi and Prasanjit, the king of Kaushal, studied here. Also the great grammarian Panini and expert politician Kautilya got education from this university. Takshashila was the best center for higher education. Normally, students used to stay with Guru to practice. Education of Vedas, military science, Gajavidya, archery, grammar, philosophy, war lore, astronomy, astrology was given here. Chanakya, the mentor of Chandragupta Maurya, also studied here. Chinese scholar Fa Hien visited this university in the beginning of 5th century. Varanasi or Kashi Varanasi was famous as one of the place of pilgrimages during 7th century. It was also the famous education center. It grew as the religious center for the Aryan culture in Upanishadic period. King of Varanasi, Ajat Shatru, was a great philosopher of Upanishadic age and great supporter of education. It is mentioned in Vyas Samhita that Maharishi Vedvyas had his ashram in Varanasi. Lord Buddha chose Varanasi a suitable place for the propagation of his preachings. Potent philosopher Adi Shankaracharya 
had to move to Kashi to adopt the new principles of Vedantas. Vallabhacharya ji and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the pioneer of Pushti Marg, attained prestige for their Vaishnav sects in Kashi. Majority of scholar families of Punjab had to migrate to Kashi while a few families migrated to Kashmir. Many other princes came for education in Varanasi. Monastery at Sarnath became a famous education center under the patronage of Emperor Ashok. Vallabhi. This university of Gujarat was a very famous center of education in 7th century. There was a significant contribution of contemporary ruler of Vansh dynasty and its people to make Vallabhi a well-renowned and a huge center of education. Vidyadham or Vallabhi was the center of Hinayana cult of Buddhist religion. In the middle of 7th century, Buddhist scholars like Sthirmati and Gurmati were the leading principles of Vallabhi. The Brahmin students from the distant areas of Ganga Yamuna used to come here for higher studies. Chinese traveller It Singh noted that Vallabhi competed with the famous education centre Nalanda which was located at eastern part of India. Vallabhi was a capital and an international port from 480 AD to 775 AD. The ruler of Vallabhi belonged to Maitrak dynasty and he patronized education and university as well. It is also notable that royal people of Maitrak dynasty were not Buddhist. However, they were helping the institution. In 775 AD, Arabians attacked, Maitraks were defeated and university was closed down. The name of famous scholars were written on the gate. Scholars, by showing their erudition, were getting higher rights in Raja Sabha. Knowledge, worship and particular system of education made the university famous not only in India, but also in the civilized world of that time. Students from India and abroad used to come for education in this university. It was an international university in the real sense. Almost all the branches of knowledge were taught here. The maintenance of the university was done through the charity given by the kings and the landlords. Actually, it showed the loyalty of the people towards the university. It was world-renowned University of Indian Education or Vidya for the knowledge of arts and science. 